Hello and welcome to episode 70 of the Confessions of a Yarn Addict podcast. Um, my name is Anniken and I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person and I sell yarn through my website yarnaddict.co.uk. Yarnaddict.co.uk. You can find links to my website and my online courses and everything else below this video and uh, also links to my social media and signing up to my newsletter and all that kind of stuff. Um, before I forget, because I'm bound to forget, I will have a special offer this weekend. So today is Tuesday 4th of April. Just had to check my computer there. So today is Tuesday 4th of April. Um, so we're coming up for the Easter weekend and I'm hoping that this video will be out on Thursday if I can get it edited today. Um, and I'm planning to do a special offer for the Easter weekend, which will be in my newsletter on Thursday as well. So I'll pop the details below, but there will be um, di uh, discounts on online courses and also discounts on patterns. So I'll put all the details below this video. So do click the show more below this video to find out what that uh, special offer is. And do sign up to my newsletter so you don't miss out on any future special offers. So welcome to today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. So I have two finished items for you. Quite a lot of progress on one item. Um, I've got a magazine design coming out. I think the same day that this video is live. But I haven't received a copy of the magazine yet. So I don't know what I can talk about yet. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe the post will arrive while I'm filming this. And I can just go and grab it and add it, uh, but we'll see. But first, let's talk about what I finished. So the first one has a bit of a story. So um, you may remember these socks that I've been working on lately. I cast on, I think I grab a notebook. So I've been trying to keep details of all my projects in a notebook. So that when we come to the end of the year, I actually know what I've done. So I started this these socks on the 18th of February. And I've actually put the finish date as the 31st of March. I think I actually finished them on the 1st of April. But I'm claiming it as a March finish because it almost was. Um, so this yarn is um, Spectrum Fiber Twisted Sock, I think. It's a high twist sock yarn in the colour Agua. And I love the colourway. So I knitted one. I showed you one in the last podcast. <laughs> one had been finished in the last podcast. And then the second one, there's a little bit of a story. So last week we went to the cinema one day and I always put, I do afterthought heels. So when I get to the heel, I just knit in a piece of waist yarn and then I always put a stitch marker on the front of the foot. Can you see that? So that it makes it easier to count. And because I've been knitting on this socks, this sock while we're out in the bad quite a lot, what I actually done is I, I had a marker where the start of the leg, because they knit the toe up. So I had a marker where the start of the leg, or where the leg started. And then every 10 rows, I had another stitch marker where when I knitted 10 rounds on the leg, I put it in. And then I did 10 more rounds, I moved it up. So I basically moved it up every 10 rounds, just to make counting a bit easier. I had to do 65 rounds in stocking stitch, and then 25 rounds of rib on the leg. And last time I filmed, I put this marker in so I'd remember where I was. And then last week we were going to the cinema. So on the day, earlier that day, I picked up this knitting because I couldn't remember where I was or how much I had left to do. And I looked at it and I saw this marker up here. And I thought, oh, I've just started the leg. Okay, that'll give me plenty of knitting to do at the cinema. So I put it in my bag. We went to Plymouth um, to run some errands first and then we went to... 
a, a restaurant next to the cinema and just got a drink and a dessert. We didn't want a full meal, but we had to waste a bit of time. We had like an hour, I think, before the film started, so we were a bit early. So I sat in knitting um, and we were chatting. And my row counter, because I keep one of these row counters in every project, and my row counter said 43. And I looked at my sock and I thought, well, why does this say 43? Because I'm clearly at the beginning of the leg. It's the marker, the purple marker. There was one here, which for some reason I just ignored. And then there was one here. And I thought, oh, I must have just forgotten to click my row counter. So I reset the row counter to zero. Counter have, I've done like three rounds, I think, from where the purple marker was up here. So I counter that, I added those to the row counter. And then I did probably have no, about 10 or so rounds while we were sitting in this um, restaurant chatting. And then, so I thought, okay, I've got quite a lot of knitting to do at the cinema. So I went to the cinema and knitted away. And when I thought it felt like it was starting to get quite long, I just grabbed my phone and just um, didn't actually turn the phone on, but just like um, touched it so that the screen would come on. Um, just so I could see what my row counter said and my row counter said 64 so I thought great knit another round I've done my 65 rounds I started the rib and I did two or three rounds on the rib and then the film finished so we got home and I always grab my sock when I get home and check that I haven't made any mistakes or dropped any stitches or anything like that while I was knitting during the film so I did that and I looked at it and I thought the leg looks really long and then I realised that this marker down here was the beginning of the leg, not the one I had up here. And that the reason it said for my row counter said 43 was because I'd already done 43 rounds on the leg and I only need to do another 22 to get the 65. So basically I'd done something like 40 rounds too many. So I considered just start carrying on with the rib and then I'm picking the first one picking the rib on the first one and adding another however many rounds 20 rounds or so and then doing the rib again um i thought well that's actually going to be more knitting so um and i was also was a bit worried about whether i'd have enough yarn which i think i would have done but so i decided to unrip a big chunk of the knitting i'd done in the cinema and then knit a rib so um if you follow along with that story well done but basically i did a lot of knitting that I needn't have done so I was a bit annoyed but anyway the sock is done and I need to trust that what my row counter says is correct and check where my markers are um so I usually put a marker when I finish the toe when I do toe up and then I put another marker when I get to where the um waist yarn goes in for the heel I put it at the top of the sock so I can count easier and then I normally do another one when I start a rib if I'm doing a sock that is in stocking stitch and then sometimes I use these markers just to mark where I start, like for example, to measure progress since the last time I filmed, that kind of thing. So all these markers can come off now um, and I can wear these socks. And I did have a bit left, so that's actually gone into my uh, crochet blanket, which I'll talk about in a second. I have my crochet blanket here and I was just wondering whether I'd actually done any. So I'm just going to take these out. Um, and then these socks can go straight in my sock drawer. So that's not the only pair of socks I finished. So let me just swap my um, sock blockers over. Okay, so the second pair of socks I literally just finished. In fact, I haven't actually woven in the ends on the second sock yet. So these are the socks that I'm knitting for Simon. And I was so close to finishing them. So I actually just sat down for like, because I just had like the um, shaping left on the heel, afterthought heel to do. And so I just did that quickly before I started filming so that I could talk about this and then I can give these to Simon when he gets home today rather than putting them away for the next podcast to talk about. So let's talk about these. Both of these socks, these socks and these are knitted toe up using my Aventudas pattern, which has an afterthought heel. It has a choice of two toes, two afterthought heels and toe up or top down. So I will link that pattern below as well. And I also have an online course where I teach how to knit these socks called Successful Socks, which I will be adding some more lessons to that. I was going to do it last summer and I didn't get around to it. So I'm determined to do it this summer. 
so let's look at these socks so these again i knitted toe up the yarn is um yarn i got when i was in norway it's lang super socks uh color six ply so i think that's like a thin dk maybe a sports weight i don't think it's quite a dk but i think it's like a thin dk probably like a sports weight it has um 390 meters and it's 150 grams um and it's 75 percent uh, superwash wool and 25 percent uh, nylon and i got that in norway i mainly got it because we went to this one yarn shop and i didn't really see any yarn in there i was desperate to buy and i felt like i ought to buy something so i bought a pair of sock uh, bought some sock yarn i wasn't in love with the color but it was the one that i kind of liked the best so when i came home and i started knitting them i actually asked Simon if he liked the color and he if he'd like these socks because they're a bit thicker and he likes slightly thicker socks so these are going to be for simon um his feet are only like one size bigger than mine so i can probably wear these as well if i wanted to but they are knitted with an afterthought heel as i said again you can see all of my markers here because i do like all these markers these are knitted in rib all the way so i do rib at the top of the foot and then on the leg i do rib all the way around gives you like a really nice fit and this is the second one and as you can see i haven't woven in the end from the afterthought heel yet because i literally just finished them and i was going to go start weaving in the end and i thought no i might as well film first and do that while i'm editing the video so those are done so i'm pleased with that to get those done as well so i need to cast on some new socks but i haven't decided quite what yet so i'm going to go and pull out a couple of options from my uh, shelves and show you what i'm thinking about casting on next so i like to have a pair of socks on the go because it's easy just to pull in put it in my handbag when i'm out and about i tend to keep my socks lately i've been keeping them in this pouch which is one i got last year in spain when i bought a tinted moisturizer from origins 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 um i was giving that as, that as a freebie it's looking a bit dirty and worn out now but i do really like it because it's kind of about the right size to go in my handbag and i can fit a pair of socks in there quite easily so i need to cast another pair of socks because we've got the easter weekend coming up and we'll probably be out and about and then we're going away for a few days so i do need some of the socks on the needles um these are my options so let's see i can't decide what to cast on next i think it probably will be this one so this one is the yarn badger which i got fairly recently like earlier this year and it's gorgeous isn't that pretty the pastel is stripes a self-striping yarn it's a superwash marine and nylon 400 meter and it's called surfs up and i just love that colorway and i think that might be the one um i recorded a stash video which was out last week um where i went through my stash and tidied it up and decided what to keep and what to de-stash i put all the de-stash yarns on my website and i must admit i think maybe most of them have sold now there might be a couple left so i will pop the link below um but a lot of them have sold um which i'm so grateful so if you bought from my d-stash thank you very much there were a couple of things that were left from my previous d-stash which which sold as well so that was a relief uh because it just clears a bit of space and i've been trying to tidy up and sort my office out a bit because i got wonder wool coming up which means i'll have more stock and things like that so when i was clearing up my stash i was trying to think about um and i'll link that stash video, video below by the way but I was trying to think about what I wanted to use the yarn for and um, I've said for a while I'd really like to do a pair of socks in this kind of tweedy yarn so this is a tweedy yarn that has kind of colorful necks so these are both from Debonair I've had these in my stash for a long time and it's called Donegal Dot and it's 85% superwash merino 15% Donegal Nep 400 meters per 100 grams this is olive and this is hot pink and I like both of those colorways. I think when I bought them, I was thinking maybe I would do a shawl with both of them. But I mean, I haven't done a lot of shawls in the last year, to be quite honest. Um, I don't know how hard wearing these are as socks. But I do fancy giving it a go. And I don't know. Um, and then I've got this one from Pixie Yarn, who um, I bought this at Stitch Fest in Devon last November. And it's called birthday so i'm assuming it was a special celebration yarn 
um i think she had a lot of this i'm wondering whether it was like a special i'm assuming birthday celebration maybe anniversary of her business i'm not sure uh but it's pixie yarn um it's sock fingering weight super 75 percent super merino 25 percent nylon 425 meters per 100 grams it's a tiny bit thinner than the most of the sock yarns i've got um and i just love this colorway so i'm very tempted to cast on that and then i also got this from Orchidian Luxury Yarns, which has been in my stash for a while. This is called Platinum Sock. Let them be more. Let there be more purple light, and it's seventy-five percent superwash merino, twenty-five percent nylon, four hundred twenty-five meters. So it's the same blend as this one. And I actually have two skeins of that, which makes me. I've done socks in this one in a grey colorway with these splashes of color, and I like this so much. I mean, uh, Abby did this purple one. I ordered two skeins. Because I thought that gives me options to do something other than socks. And I am wondering whether I want to use this for socks or something else since I've got two colorways. So I've been very tempted to use it for socks. But maybe I will not use that for socks. So I think what it's going to come down to is these two. And I don't know which one to choose. So if you were me, which one would you choose? The Yarn Badger or the Pixie Yarns? Yarn Badger, Pixie. I don't know i need to decide though okay so that's my yarn options but i'll be casting on that this week ready for a trip uh to london soon um i just need to decide which one to cast on for i've also had um made quite a lot of progress on the top i'm knitting so i had some more yarn arrives so i'm going to insert that clip here okay so i'm just popping in here on a saturday morning um because I was progressing really well a few days ago on my um, knitting for olive silk sweater. Uh, I had I knew I needed to buy more yarn because I knew I didn't have enough because I only had two balls. So I was thinking because I'm going to London in April that I would pop into um, Beautiful Knitters in Pimlico and get some because I know they sell it and I knew they had the colour I wanted. But I decided I didn't want to wait that long. So I ordered it online and it came yesterday when I was out teaching. So I got four more balls. So that gives me six in total. Not 100% sure that'll be enough. I'll just put them on the floor. So there is a chance I may need to get some more, but um, hopefully not. So we'll see. First, I'm going to get up on the old label and just check by any chance if this happens to be the same dialogue, which would be a miracle. Um, but I don't think it is. Okay, it doesn't actually say dialogue here. It has a colour number. But it doesn't give a dialogue, which is strange, but anyway. Um... So let's get out the ball of yarn and see if it visibly looks different. Those are the two balls of yarn. I don't think it looks different. If I hold that one, I think this one looks darker in the camera, but that might just be because it's not a full ball. I don't know. But if I hold that strand over here, so that's from the original ball, I don't, I don't know. Might be a tinsy bit darker, but I don't think it is. So I don't know whether to just start knitting with this when I run out of this. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I don't know how much I got less, left of this, but it's left but less than half a ball. Um, I just grab my little scales out and have a quick measure. Oh, I think my scales are running out of battery. I'll put it here and see how much yarn I have left. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, do helical knitting. So I've got 24 grams left. So I've got about just, just under half the skein left. Um, so this ball has taken me from where did I? Okay, so I changed balls here just at the end of the lace. Um, so I think I might knit a few more rounds in this. And then I'm going to do helical, knit helical knitting to blend in one of these new balls 
um, so that if there is a change in dye lot, it's likely to be less noticeable. And then I'll just carry on with the new balls. Um, I may need to get more. I had a spreadsheet set up to work out how much yarn I'd need. And when I checked it before I ordered this, I th I'm not sure. It came up with six balls, but I'm not 100% sure whether that was in four ply. It, that was in 100 grams balls or 50 gram balls. And I haven't double checked my spreadsheet since I ordered. Because um, I'd already ordered by the time I thought about that. So um, I may still not have enough. We'll see. I also haven't decided what I'm going to do about the sleeves. Whether they're going to be long sleeves or short sleeves. So I definitely have enough to finish the body. May have enough to do the sleeves. I don't know yet. We'll see how we get on. Um, I also need to put this on a stitch holder soon and measure it because it does look big. But also I'm used to knitting a lot of stuff for magazines in a size 10. And this is my, my size. So it's not a size 10. It's a lot bigger. So it may be that I think it looks small just because I'm not used to knitting things in my size very often. Because I mostly knit stuff for magazine samples. So we'll see. Anyway, I just want to pop in and record this in between podcast recordings just to let you know that the yarn had arrived and what my thought process was when it arrived. So I'll hand you back now to the regular uh, scheduled uh, proceedings. I made quite a lot of progress and I'm glad I ordered that yarn because um, I was thinking I would knit up as much as I could and then I would buy the yarn when we go to London. But um, one thing that meant I would have had to carry that around. Also, I've looked at the opening hours for Beautiful Knitters and they're not open on Mondays and Tuesdays. And we're going to be in London on a Monday and Tuesday. We're also going to be there on a Wednesday. So I'm hoping I can pop in on the Wednesday morning. But it, I'm glad I ordered it because it means I can carry on with this. So I'm knitting quite a lot. So I put it on, a pair, on my uh, stitch holder cords. Uh, to try it on and I recorded a little bit of video of doing that a couple of days ago so I will just pop that clip in here now as well Okay, so this has been blocked. I took the stitches off and put it on these stitch holder cords. Front on one and the back on the other. And now I'm going to try it on. I've just put the yarn. I didn't break the yarn. Um, because I thought if I want to make it a few rounds longer, it'd be useful to have the yarn attached. So let's just try it on. So what I want to make sure is the width, which is more than big enough. I wanted a little bit oversized and I think I wanted drop shoulder. So that's fine. So I'll come up to about there, I guess. So lengthwise, a bit difficult to tell. Yeah, lengthwise is fine as well. Yeah. It's, it would be easier to try it on if it was top down, obviously, but. Um, it's better than wondering whether it's going to fit or not. So um, I took it off, soaked it, blocked it properly. Sometimes if I just want to check the size for measurements, I will just pin it out dry and then measure it. But this I actually blocked properly and pinned it yesterday afternoon and then left it folded up overnight so that if it was going to like shrink back a little bit, it would have done. But it's kept its shape, I think. So I can put that back on the needles and split for the front and the back. So I haven't actually since I tried it on, I haven't done anything else. I just folded it up and put it in my in the project bag because I have been working on something else. I'm working on a design for a book that I'm contributing to. Um, and the deadline is quite short because I mucked up and um, missed the email about ordering the yarn and things. So the, I don't have a lot of time and because we're going to be away and things, I need to really crack on with that. So I mostly worked on that yesterday and the day before. 
apart from finishing this pair of socks. Um, one thing I need to decide, because I haven't written the pattern for this any further than where I've got to, and one of the things I need to decide, I mean, obviously I've only knitted up to the underarms, but I'm just putting it like that, because one of the things I need to decide is whether I'm going to do setting sleeves or drop shoulder sleeves. I think because it is slightly oversized, I'm probably going to do drop shoulder sleeves. Um, but that means that the armhole will be short, um, shallower than if I do set in sleeves. So I'm thinking that might mean that I may need to knit a little bit longer before I split for the armhole. So at the moment I'm knitting the round, so I'm going to split for the front and back. That's another reason why I've left all the stitches on the stitch holders, because if I'm going to um, knit a bit longer before I split for the armhole, then I might as well put them all back on the needle and carry on. If I'm going to split for the front and the back now, then I just put one half of the stitches back on the needle. So I need to decide that really before I carry on. And I also could do it like writing the rest of the pattern before I carry on. And I haven't had time to do that. I would like to alternate between this project and this deadline project for the next few days um, every Easter. I kind of had hoped I could finish this jumper by the time we go to London, but that's not going to happen. Um, regarding that project I'm working on, this special project I'm working on, I had some yarn arrive, which I will share. But this book is not out for like a year, I think. Um, I think I'm allowed to share this. I've gotten in trouble for sharing stuff before, but I think this is okay. So I've got um, this yarn and this yarn for this project. Um, it's Shkepis. Now, somebody sent me a video to how to pronounce Shkepis. Thank you very much. I did watch it and I've forgotten how it is, but it's something like Shkepis. Sheepies, something like that. Sheepies, sheepies. Um, if I can find the video again, I'll link below. But somebody did send me a video link, so thank you very much. If that was you, I appreciate it. I did go and watch it. I need to go, probably go and watch it again. Anyways, Metropolis, um, which is seventy-five percent merino, twenty-five percent nylon, is fifty grams, two hundred meters, and it's um. It feels, when you nip with it, it feels thicker than it is because it is basically the same as like the sock yarn in terms of the meterage per 100 grams. It feels like it has, it feels very light and it feels like it has kind of like a slightly felted texture. I was wondering whether it's woolen spun rather, rather than worsted spun, but it doesn't say anything about that on the label. My understanding is that most um hand knitting yarns are worsted spun rather than woolen spun woolen spun means that the fibers are mixed up but before they're spun so, so it's a lighter area yarn whereas worsted spun all the fibers are aligned lying in the same direction it's a bit like brushing my hair the way my hair is now quite smooth and straight all the fiber all my hairs are lying the same way whereas when i got out of bed this morning it was not <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the difference um ish to woolen and worsted spun i wonder whether maybe it was worse woolen spun but i'm not sure but it's gorgeous to knit with i'm really enjoying it um so i got that colorway and then i got i got to choose the colorways by the way so of course i went for all purples and pinks because uh, why not that pink which i really like and another thing which i like with the skeppies yarns are that um if you like to knit from the center, they actually put a tab on the end that comes from the center. So if you like to pull from the center, it's really easy. And I don't normally like knitting from the center. I tend to knit from the outside. But when the ball is round like this, it doesn't unwind very easily from the outside. And but sometimes I find finding the ball in the center, you kind of dig in with your fingers and you pull it out and then you get a big yarn bath coming out and it's a bit messy and annoying. But here you can just pull this and it comes out really smoothly. So I probably knitted up half of one of these um, in the last couple of days. And it pulls out really, really smoothly. So I really like that. And I think they're doing that on quite a few of the yarns. Like the last yarn I used from uh, Scrapiers was also like that. But I got that colorway. So this darker purple. Uh, let me just get it out again. So this darker purple is uh, Santiago. 
and this pink colorway is Marrakesh and this lavender hang on stop that falling on the floor is Taipei and then this one is Dallas so really pretty colorways um I'm looking forward to sharing what I'm knitting on but I can't share that yet but it's something different from what I normally do I would say and I'm quite looking forward to it um, but I need to crack on and get this done fairly quickly I have also made a little bit of progress on my crochet project so I've been keeping the yarn or some of the yarn for the crochet blanket in here for a while but I was keeping the actual blanket in a separate project bag which I just popped on top of this jelly basket so I got this jelly basket when I went to Norway last year uh, from a yarn shop in Oslo I actually bought it to show that my mum and I went to and my mum got one as well and I was traveling with hand luggage only so I was a little bit worried about how I was going to get this back it does pop apart so you can lay it flat but even lay it flat it was too big for my suitcase and I was worried if I tried to pack it with stuff and still put it in my suitcase it would um, get squashed and break um, so I ended up I had a big tote bag as my like second hand luggage my small hand luggage piece um, what they call it personal item and I popped this in my tote bag and then I packed my stuff in there and that worked well and I managed to get it home with me but I do really like it bit of a 80s thing I remember having one of these in white I think in the 80s um no idea what happened to that I guess I got thrown away at some point anyway I haven't done a ton on my blanket because I didn't work on it till probably just a few days ago and then that's where I put the marker in last time I filmed so I did, I was halfway through this purple stripe, so then I added this quite colourful stripe and this um, bluey green stripe is that yarn, so you can recognise that. And now I'm doing, um, actually it's the grey version of this yarn, so it's grey with these rainbow bits, but where it's purple is grey, so it's that version, just left over from a pair of socks. Um, so I'm going to move the marker up because I don't always talk about this blanket on every podcast because I don't work on it that much and I don't think for the rest of April I will work on it very much because I've got a lot of stuff on um, with Easter my daughter's at home, trip to London, Wonderwall we'll talk about that in a minute so I move the marker up there and then we'll fold this together and put it back in here it's getting quite big i think i don't think i've got that i don't know how big i want to make it it's about i want it long enough so when i'm sitting in my chair knitting i can like it'll cover me from like here to my feet that's kind of what i'm going for um, Last week I was teaching at the Knitting Hotel in Dawlish in Devon and we did Feral and Steaking. Uh, it's a stranded colour work in Steaking and I actually remember to film a bit. I always try when I teach Steaking to actually film it when everyone's cutting their knitting. So Steaking basically means that you um, cut either a slit for the armholes or down the front uh, to create a sweater. So to create a cardigan out of a sweater, I have a video that I filmed when I did 
my recent design for Let's Knit magazine, which is a cardigan that I was knitted in the round and then it was steeped down the front to create a cardigan. So I will pop that link below. I also have an online Scandinavian strand of colorwork and steeking course. Um, so I'll pop the link to that below as well. And remember, you can get 20% off at the moment. I'll pop the code on the screen and I'll also pop the code below. And that's an Easter only offer. So I'll pop the clip that I recorded it during my class uh, next. It was filmed in portrait, so it's not the landscape, the portrait, because I just filmed it to share on my Instagram stories. And then I put it together and add some music to it. So I will share that next. <laughs> So I mentioned earlier that I did a stash video and I put out, pulled out some yarns for a de-stash. I think there are a couple of skeins left on my website, but I will link it below. If there's nothing there, then um, I apologize. <laughs> Sign up to my newsletter. So the next time I have a de-stash, you won't miss out, but that probably won't be for a while. But I also have some yarns on my website that are in the sales section like these so these i actually really like but they're not very popular and i don't know why because i really like them this is shopple um oh, what's it called a uh, six carat and they come in solid colors and they come in variegated colors and i really like them they are um like a thick lace in between the lace and the sock yarn they have 600 meters per 100 grams and it's 80% merino and 20% silk. And it has like a sort of chain construction. Uh, it's a really nice yarn. It makes beautiful shawls, it makes really nice garments, uh, but especially shawls. And but it just doesn't sell very well. Um, so I've decided to get rid of it. So it is on my website and it is reduced. I've also got a lot of Lang Merino 200, which is the four ply version which I also really like, but which it doesn't sell very well. So I've also reduced that all to clear. Um, so I'll pop the link to that below as well if you fancy treating yourself uh, at a bit of a bargain. I do have some patterns that are written for this yarn, so I'll try and link some of those below. Um, some of them may be available on Ravelry and Payhip, some may only be Ravelry, I can't remember. But I will link some of those below. Um, yeah, it's a really nice yarn, um, but I don't know why it doesn't sell. So um, I just want to point that out because they've been in the reduced section for a while now, but I think people tend to miss them. The other thing I'm thinking about is, let me just grab this pile here. So I've also been clearing out a pile 
of old magazine design that one was in let's knit a while ago i got several things that have been in knitting magazine over the last year i got a whole drawer full of stuff over there that one the yellow one was from um the knitter i think and i just have so many samples and i just don't have space for them um i have a full drawer big drawer full of samples I have been quite successful in selling short samples on my website, but garments don't really sell on my website. So I have listed some over the years and I may have sold one or two, I think, but I quite often eventually end up just giving them to a local charity shop. And I don't mind doing that, but I feel like I do worry giving it to a charity shop because it's hand knitted that people won't know how to look after it properly. So I would prefer to, and also I wouldn't mind making a little bit more money from them because, um, a little work has gone into them so i'm thinking about what to how to sell them so most of them are well they're all a size 10 uk size 10 because that's what magazines tend to ask for for their uh, samples and i'm thinking about setting up a shop on depop um i've been quite successful lately selling a lot of uh, my own secondhand stuff especially handbags old handbags on vinted but vinted feels to me like a bit of a cheap place I have considered eBay. I don't know, there's so much stuff on eBay. I don't know whether hand knits sell very well on eBay. So I was wondering maybe Depop, because that, I get the impression that's a little bit more kind of fashion-y, vintage -y place maybe. So if you have any experience of selling hand knitted stuff, where would you sell it? Let me know. Um, I don't want to set up a shop on Etsy again. I've somehow managed to lose the login details from my original Etsy account where i used to have an online shop and i set up new login details so i would have to start my shop all over again plus i haven't used etsy to sell anything for probably like 15 years 10 15 years and from what i hear about etsy from a lot of people who sell on etsy is that i don't want to go back to selling on etsy especially not just selling off stuff that's kind of temporary thing so let me know if you were looking to buy hand knitted stuff let me know where you would look. I'm also wondering about whether to have a rail of sample sale stuff at Wonderwall. So Wonderwall is coming up. It is 22nd and 23rd of um, of uh, what's are we in uh, April? Uh, I thought I'd written it down here, but I haven't. I think it's 22nd and 23rd of April um but i will link it below so wonderful is a show in wales that i'm doing um having a stall at so i've just been busy today ordering yarn and some knitting notions for that i've ordered yarn some earlier already i've ordered some paper and print ring so i can print more patterns and i'm just getting myself sorted starting to get myself sorted and i did wonder whether i would take some of these samples and set up like a sample sale rail but because they're all size 10, if I had loads of shawls I wanted to sell, I've done that before I shows, but not that many people are a size 10, to be perfectly honest. And my stall's not that big, so I'm worried about having enough space. And also my car's not that big, so I don't know if I'll have enough space in the car, so I don't know whether I'll do that. But if you have any ideas about um, selling sweaters hand knitted sweaters let me know so i've just checked yes wonderful is 22nd and 23rd of may in mid wales i'll pop the link to it below um but i'm really looking forward to it i do get a little bit anxious about shows these days mainly because shows are not as good as they used to be not in that they're not as well organized as they used to be but just in that sales are not what they used to be and i'm talking not just talking about the covid effect but my probably best years for shows were 2018, 2017, 2018, 2019, there was a drop. 2020, I didn't do any shows. 2021, it was quite a big drop. I only did one show in 2021, and that was uh, Yarndale. And that was probably like 40% drop on 2019. Um, last year, both Wonderwall and Yarndale were about the same for me. A bit better than the year before, but not brilliant. Um, so i'm kind of i don't know not sure about shows whether shows are really worth doing anymore um 
there are a ton of indie dyes and I know I don't do indie dyeing but I feel like maybe a lot of people go to shows looking for hand dyed yarn which I don't but I do kind of do because I got the models of Uruguay yarns which are hand dyed but they're not hand dyed by, by me but I do sell a lot of patterns and a, very few stall holders sell a lot of patterns I do have a big choice in patterns but um, there are also a lot of shows I know everyone wants a local show and I'd quite get that but it means that um the shows that used to be really good just aren't anymore so i don't know i keep saying every year like if the shows aren't better this year i might not do it obviously this year we got the added cost of living which is really bad here in the uk so that worries me a bit so i'm only doing two shows this year which is uh, wonderful and i've just found out i'm doing yarndale i've seen a few other store holders announce they're doing it so i'm assuming i'm allowed to tell you but that's in september in yorkshire those are the only two shows I'll be doing this year, apart from a local show in my local town in Cornwall in October. Okay, so I feel like I'm starting to ramble a bit, which means that I probably, I'm just looking to see if I had anything else I want to talk about in my notes, and I don't. So I'm just going to show you one thing. Um, I will record a separate video on this when the magazine gets here. But the sample came back a few days ago, and I think the magazine is out the same day this video is out. I hope, Thursday. Um, this is my latest sample of what's going to be in the latest issue of Knitting Magazine. Oh, hang on, it's not buttoned up. It's a cardigan. I don't design a lot of cardigans these days, I don't think. Um, the kind of theme was kind of rustic, I think, rustic walls. So this is my design. It's a cardigan. Um, got a stitch, but like a lacy twist thing. Um, I will talk more about this. I will record a separate video when the magazine actually arrives and talk more about this. And it will probably be out. If the magazine arrives today or tomorrow, it will probably be out next week. If not, it may be the week after. Uh, but I will talk more about this when the magazine actually gets here. Which normally I get it a few days before it goes on sale. So I would imagine it would be here today, maybe tomorrow. I don't think we've had any post yet today. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope to see you at Wonderwall if you're going. Do stop by and say hello. And if you're not going to Wonderwall, then do check out my website. I'll put all the links below to everything I've talked about. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.